In the year 2008, Fred Figglehorn was the hottest thing on the internet website YouTube. He was the first user to get over 1 million subscribers. He was the golden boy of the world's biggest video sharing site. However, things were about to take a turn for the worst. As his popularity grew, so did his ego. By the end of 2009, his subscriber count had gone up to a staggering 1 billion. He began doing strange things like wearing a tweed crotchless jumpsuit. He would randomly jump up and start singing the Polish national anthem whilst masturbating. And he would insist that everyone refer to him as Mr. Papadopoulos. Eventually, he became intolerable. And after a while, everyone began trying to plot Fred's ultimate demise. However, their attempts would not be necessary, for it would be Fred himself who would become the architect of his own downfall. By the summer of 2010, Fred had reached a massive and completely unthinkable subscriber number of 8.7 billion. It was at this point that things began to turn. <clears throat> the global population was only 6.3 billion, and the internet using population was only 1.2 billion. This made YouTube very suspicious, and upon an investigation, they discovered that Fred Figglehorn was in fact subscribed to himself via 8 billion sock accounts. He was in fact a complete fraud. So much shame was built upon Fred that he couldn't take it, and one night he suddenly disappeared, never to be seen again. Until now, Fred Figglehorn is back. The year is 2032. I suppose you probably <clears throat> all want to know where I've been back when all the stuff happened. The shame was just too much for me. I couldn't take it anymore. And the scandal just broke out and it became more media based and I had the press and it started off and I've got the papers still here. It's like Fred socks shops and Madonna's box. I mean Madonna's box is that about? I mean Fred buys crack from a Nazi. I mean what the hell is this? Fred accused of badger molestation. I mean Fred eats retarded baby. You know? Fred spends the night with three asexual eunuch prostitutes. Man with penises for eyes works at nursery. That's not me, but Running away was the only option I had left. I'd, I'd make a phone call to the uh, local police and I told them that I was a religious extremist and that I was going to be assassinating the president within the next two days. There was no need for me to do that, it's just I was going to leave and I thought I might as well fuck some shit up, have a bit of fun. Ironically someone did shoot the president two days later, but uh, that definitely wasn't me. I decided the best thing to do would be to go to Mexico because I live two miles from the border. Yeah, I could walk back in a couple of hours. So I just threw some stuff in a rucksack and left the house, turned left, heading toward the Mexico border. Unfortunately, I made a bit of a miscalculation and six weeks later I arrived at the Canadian border realising I should have turned right outside my house. But um, once you've started. So I arrived and entered Canada and I was deported within six hours because they found out I was vaguely interesting, and that wasn't what they wanted in Canada. I was taken to the Canadian Immigration Headquarters, to shed, really. They asked me for details, and I thought, well, if I lie, end up somewhere else. So I told them that my name was Ahmed Osama Kaboom. I was 32, and I live in Sao Paulo with my wife, Deirdre. Unfortunately, they didn't take me to Brazil. They took me to a mental institution, because I had been deemed to be dangerous insane. The words they used, penetrating dead children level. It was a long four years, particularly if you had to share a room with a man called Nigel, a chronically obese psychotic who heard voices that he believed were Spandau Ballet telling him what to do. All they were telling him to do every day was to eat as much of his own shit as possible. But I did meet a guy called Montel. He was a 75-year-old black man. He told me that he knew where there was 10 million dollars. It was hidden 
a sewer in Cambodia, and he would be happy to tell me where it was. Then he said, in return, I had to give him oral sex on the knob, cock on the dick, on the area, twice a day for a year. It's a true gambit of emotions I went through there. Sorry, but blowing Montel's genitals was not really worth any money, you know. Anyway, about a year later, I'm in the Cambodian sewer. I'm looking quite, I've got a map and a torch. Don't ask me how I got to Cambodia. You know, it's just too illegal. I'm there, big place Cambodia, I have to look around, and I was determined. It's hard to describe how determined I was. You, I couldn't describe it in words, you wouldn't appreciate it. Unless, of course, you have been blowing a 75-year-old you know, Negro pensioner 720 times for the last year. You know, it becomes easier, but, you know, and uh, so I just determined. I kept looking and looking, I was going to find it. But a month later, there it was, it came to me, it hit me, right there, the old bastard lied, there was no fucking money, he was using me, and I was there, covered in mostly paedophile shit, I had no money, I had acquired a skill work within the last year, and I thought I could use that, I became one of the higher rate homosexual prostitutes of Cambodia, I made enough money to uh, make sure that within six months I had a full blown meth addiction. Uh, I had a bit of a, an episode and three days asleep. I woke up by a horrible sensation, a horrible pain, and it turned out I had wandered into a zoo and gone into the elephant enclosure. They were very horny while I was passed out. One of the more aggressive and uh, not very chivalrous male elephants fingered my anus. And I required, I think it was, 18,412 stitches. It basically just glued me back together. And I needed to get out. And I found a man who would get me out. He said he could get me smuggled out of the country via airplane for only 300 million Vietnamese dong. And I ended up in an airport late at night, thinking I'm going in the cargo hold. No, no, no. He gaffer taped me to the underside of the airplane. How the fucking pilot didn't see me, I never know. And I landed safely after 18 hours in the ocean. We crashed. I was captured by Lebanese terrorists who tied me to a radiator. Apparently it was a Terry White reunion. It was okay. It was seven years flew by. I mean, there was one point when they did stick a Kalashnikov in my pee hole and they shot me 27 times and it burst all my stitches. So I came back. I was watching my videos, my old videos for a little brother. Fred goes to the dentist. Fred jumps up and down and goes, no. They're, they're shit. They're fucking shit. No wonder I had to fucking suck a cow myself. I wanted to do Fred fucks the milkman. Fred gets molested by his uncle. Fred sets fire to a fucking nursing home. Google YouTube wouldn't let me. Well, you can't stop me now, can you? Oh no, is that more than. <laughs> Gypsy ADHD. No, this is angry, pissed off, worn out, male prostitute, meth addicted, ripped anus, bestiality enthusiast, Fred, Fred Figglehorn. Yeah. That's right. 